And then Prabhupada spoke. And when he spoke, he said, the supreme absolute truth is a person. And I thought that was the most intelligent thing I'd ever heard in my whole life. You know, because I'd been reading all these Buddhist books, you know. Uh, you cannot say it is, you cannot say it is not. You cannot say it both is and is not. You cannot say it neither is nor is not. And here Prabhupada was telling me the supreme absolute truth is a person. And I thought that makes so much sense. And I, I really knew this time that I had found the person I was looking for. But I did begin to have a doubt a little later, because I... After you had joined? Well, I hadn't joined, no, this, this, right at this time. I began to think, well, I can see the Swami's very honest. He's not just here looking for money. But how do I know he really has knowledge? He could be very honest, also be misled. And I didn't say anything to him, but while I was thinking like this, I went to hear him speak, and he said, this, and he said, I teach only what is in Scripture. And then I thought, well, if he teaches only what is in Scripture, there's no danger. So I kept on going. That way I started going regularly. My first communication, I can at this point remember, took place during the mm, uh, Jamashtami time, mm, or Prabhupada's appearance uh, day. Uh, Srila Prabhupada would receive uh, roses from each one of us which we offered him and give a rose back and he spoke. Uh, he gave a lecture and uh, while he was lecturing I felt like so many of my God brothers that Srila Prabhupada was not only speaking just for me but he was uh, looking at me uh, so that I really felt personally addressed by Srila Prabhupada. It reminded me very much in some ways of Krishna's lunch with his uh, friends. Uh, he was there in the middle and he communicated to each one of the thousand uh, cowherd boys. So in a similar way I felt uh, what many of my God brothers have uh, told me that Prabhupada just spoke to them and even uh, looked at them. Prabhupada's eyes were wander, wandering over his audience and sometimes he closed his eyes in deep concentration but he somehow had the ability to connect to every one of us and I remarked that very much. Then finally because I felt so personally addressed by Srila Prabhupada I ventured to put mm, a challenging question to him my intention was such, I wanted to test Prabhupada, foolish as I was, if he was really the perfect spiritual master I could surrender my life to, which would have serious consequences as far as money uh, was concerned and position in life and so on. So the only way in my uh, mind at that time, which was not very developed spiritually was to ask him a challenging question which I felt he could not answer and then uh, see how he would react. And I asked a question to him which was mm, like this. If God is all good, why did he create this uh, Maya which inflicts suffering upon the living entities? Prabhupada looked at me and then he requested Syama Sundara to repeat the question. Syama Sundara had not heard my question, maybe due to my mm, bad accent, and I repeated it again. Prabhupada asked again if the question could be repeated. I became insecure. But I again answered the question, you say God is all good, it can't be because he has created Maya which is certainly not all good with us. So either he is not all good or Maya has gone out of his hands and now uh, is no longer under his control and punishes us and makes us suffer uh, against the good intention of God. That's not my question. Prabhupada looked very intently at me and then uh, spoke to me and said, not Krishna has created Maya, you have created Maya. 
I very much remember this. Uh, I was startled. I couldn't understand philosophically what he was saying. Me creating the whole material world? I cannot even create a house because I'm insolvent at the moment. Uh, um, um, later I could understand his explanation. Um, but at that time, all I could understand is Krishna was not at fault for my situation. I was at fault. And that was enough. I thought, what a brilliant answer. Uh, I have understood the point. Uh, I better surrender unto uh, 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 Krishna and Srila Prabhupada, who seemed to be very close with the Lord. That was the first uh, memorable encounter with Srila Prabhupada, where he uh, uh, had uh, demolished uh, like a sadhu always does, my um, concept that I could challenge him and show that he was uh, not able to answer my foolish question and uh, where he had actually affected a transformation in my heart. Prabhupada, he would always talk about the impersonalists and the Buddhists and Hari Griva and I began to think, well, the Swami, he's not liberal enough. So we stopped going. It couldn't have been very long. We were at the, you know, sitting around Mott Street talking about this. And suddenly, Kirtanananda came in. And he said, I've decided to leave the Swami. I don't like what's going on. So I said, well, we've been talking about that too. And he said, you fools, do you think I could leave the Swami? So we had been tricked. So uh, he insisted that we go see Prabhupada and talk to Prabhupada. So we went to see Prabhupada and Prabhupada said that you should not think that uh, you cannot discuss things with me if you have some doubt. And I said, well, we don't like these things you're saying about the Buddhists and Sri Ramakrishna. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, okay, I will explain. He said, I have never criticized Lord Buddha. In fact, I have always called him Lord Buddha but his followers eat meat, and they don't believe in God, and they don't believe in the soul. They are atheists. He said, you show me anywhere in the Buddhist scriptures where it talks about God or talks about the soul. He said, and as for Ramakrishna, I have always said, and I will always say, that he was nothing but a crazy priest. And he said, uh, he said Ramakrishna said that you could worship Kali or worship Krishna, and it's the same. And I do remember that reading his books. And he said, but Krishna says, if you worship the demigods, you go to the demigods, and if you worship me, you come to me. So he contradicted Krishna. He said, that's like say, buying a ticket to Chicago and trying to get to Los Angeles. You know? And I said, well, what about all these wonderful things in his books? Prabhupada said his disciples took them from the Vedas and put them in the books and said that he said them. And then he said, uh, Ramakrishna's followers eat meat. He said, they go to the doctor and get a letter saying they'll die if they don't eat meat, right? And he said, everybody, all the sadhus in India know this. And he told me about some gathering of sadhus. Maybe it was Kumbh Mela, I don't know, because in those days I knew nothing. And he said, uh, there was a dead fish floating on the water. And the sadhus were laughing. They were saying, quick, call the Ramakrishna mission. <laughs> and then here was the clincher. He told me, Vivekananda, Ramakrishna's principal disciple, when he met Ramakrishna, and Ramakrishna touched him on the forehead, and Vivekananda felt electric shocks. And then Prabhupada started to laugh, and he said, you've read about the universal form, where does it say anything about electric shocks? And then Vivekananda fainted. And when Vivekananda woke up, then Ramakrishna was crying. And Vivekananda said, why are you crying? And Ramakrishna said, I have given you all my power, I have none left. I, I remember that story. And Prabhupada said, so is spiritual knowledge like money? If I give it to you, I have none left. And that was the clincher. <laughs>